Hello and welcome back and today after the announcement recently of USB 4 becoming available in 2020 I thought it was worth revisiting and going through the difference between all the different kinds of USB that you can find right now. You're not looking too much at a white screen, here I am, there's my thumb up. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and let's get this video started. So in the beginning there was USB A. USB A it was available for quite a long time and we're going to talk about types first before we talk about speeds and USB-A is the one that everyone's familiar with. USB-A, if we take a closer look at it here, go up nice and close, we can see it's nice, easy going, everyone recognises it and it's white in colour. There was USB-1 and USB-2 uh, variants of that but we'll talk about the types later on. After this, more compact devices came along and with more compact devices we needed a new kind of USB. This USB is known as USB Mini. For those that have had older, maybe, you know, creative music players or old portable phones, chances are you'll be very familiar with this connection. Now, the more astute of you may have already noticed that I've skipped USB B. Now, USB Type B is the one we find on printers. It's the big chunky one that kind of looks like the letter B, but Ultimately, we're going to skip over that one for this video because I don't have a cable available. Um, but US, this is USB Mini. Generally, you only find this in versions USB 1 and 2. Next, for again, an up-and-coming USB connection was USB Micro. Now, USB Micro, for those that have got Android phones over the last five or six years, maybe not so much in the last year or so, you'll be very familiar with this connection. This cable here, very small, is available in USB um, 2 uh, versions, but not USB 3 for versions that I'll go to in just a wee moment. But after this, we got to now currently what I think is the, the standard for USB at the moment, and that is USB Type-C. Now, USB Type-C is kind of the gold standard right now, not only because it's completely reversible, but also because of a power delivery system and a better construction of the internals of the cable. It's worth mentioning that not only is it possible to have this in USB, but there are versions of it that are available with Thunderbolt, with the exact same looking cable, but it's worth mentioning that although they look the same, they do function very differently indeed. And although you can use... Um, a US, you can use a Thunderbolt cable on a USB Type-C USB port. You can't use it the other way around and get the same speeds. So those are the USB cables that are currently available at this time. There is another kind of USB um, mi micro port, and that's known as this one here. And again, I don't have a cable available. But this cable here, if anyone's ever seen this on devices before, this is a combination of that USB micro connection but with a two port connective assembly to allow extra power and other facilities. So if you have a USB micro cable, you can plug that directly into half of that port. Or if you've got the full depth cable for power and data transfer, that is an option too. So those are the cable types. Now let's talk about the connection types because these are two different things. The, the cable type and the port are only the hard sort of hardware part of this. The actual architecture and protocol of the USB is what dictates your speed. So if we go back to that USB 2 connection, we can look at that big fat USB A port. Then again, it is available in micro, mini, B, and more. This will give you in USB 2 around 480 megabits of speed, which in real terms these days is very slow indeed. Don't get me wrong, there are ways that you can connect, can connect USB 2 to the likes of USB 3 and higher, but, and, and you have to do that with the relevant crossover cable, if you do that, you're still only going to get 480 megabits per second maximum, because one end of that connection is USB 2. USB 2 is considered you know legacy and old and unusable anymore it can be accessed but in terms of real world speeds and utility of data you're not really going to see it it also delivers 2.5 watts of data of uh, speed now moving forward we can go into usb 3 now usb 3 has gone through a lot of changes recently there's a usb 3 type a connection 
and that USB 3 type A connection there allows us to have if you have the right cable of either this at both ends or this going into a USB 3 B cable or USB 3 going into a type C cable it can deliver 4.5 watt of power as well as in USB 3 5 gigabits per second data transmission but once again it's worth remembering that the naming protocol of USB has changed and in fact by modern standards USB 3 of this speed of 5 gigabits per second is known as USB 3.1 Gen 1. Now on top of that there is a better version of this called USB 3.1 Gen 2 where if you want to utilize those speeds you have to make sure you've got USB 3 at both uh, USB 3.1 Gen uh, 2 connection at either end. Typically to get that 10 gigabits per second you don't have to have USB-C at either end and in fact there are some cables out there like the one I just showed you that allow you to connect an A and a B together. Both of these cables I'm holding will work on USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports and that will allow you to have 10 gigabits per second data transmission and between 60 and 100 watts of power um, delivery via this cable to your connected devices and at the moment that is pretty much the best you can get for USB however USB 3.2 and USB 4 are scheduled for release and availability with motherboard manufacturers in 2020 now this is going to change the game a lot I'm going to try and show you now that is a C to C cable and on the table here we'll put that A to C cable now these two cables here will be able to be used in USB 3.2 and USB 3 um, USB 4 but USB 3.2 will be available in three different speeds of 10 gigabits per second 20 gigabits per second and 40 gigabits per second but that's USB 4 these these speeds will only be available for the 40 gigabits per second version if the ports you have are designated USB 4 40 gig connections which I know is confusing also both ends have to be USB type C to get that speed if you utilize other connections you won't be able to get that 40 gigabits per second transmission now on top of that USB 3.2 has been announced and with it USB have announced a white paper that they've submitted to change the name of USB again and now USB 3.1 will be known in the following ways. So USB 3, there we go, standard 5 gigabits per second USB 3, in 2020 they're trying to submit that the name should be changed to USB 3.2 Gen 1. Next we've got USB 3.1 Gen 2 as we currently know it, that will be changed to USB 3.2 Gen 2 and finally the fastest 20 gigabits per second version of USB 3.2, the one with two C's on the end, will be USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2, so X2 at the end. It's incredibly confusing, which leaves us now with USB 4, something that is still theoretical and only rarely seen at trade shows. And this is one that's going to utilize that USB connection USB Type-C at either end to get that speed. USB 4 is going to be 40 gigabits per second. And although it will be backwards compatible, the only way to get that 100 watts of power and 40 gigabits per second speed is to use a Type-C to Type-C connector. Now, if you are going to be utilizing docking stations or devices that support the USB um, four, and this is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 dock what will happen with USB 4 is if you have multiple devices connected to a docking station that are connected to that device I'll go in there put another one in that one what will happen is USB 4 is going to be smart enough to make sure that the devices that connect to USB 4 if this max speed of this one, for example, was seven gigabits per second, you're using an external storage array, 
with a max speed because of all the hard drives is seven gigabits per second and this device here is connected to a display device then this device will have a fluid amount of speed which means in real terms that instead of the 40 gigabits per second connection of USB 4 dividing 20 and 20 if this only uses 7 then it will let this device have access if it needs it to the full 33 gigabits per second remaining in that transition speed so do bear that in mind but that's it USB is getting super confusing guys and I haven't even got onto where Thunderbolt 3 fits into this whereby they're saying that USB 4 will be compatible with Thunderbolt 3 but only on devices where Intel and their incredibly stringent Thunderbolt 3 ruling and licensing allows them to use it. You can see why, because if USB 4 is 40 gigabits per second and Thunderbolt 3 is 40 gigabits per second, you can see a slight conflict there of Intel not wanting to support USB as much. But this has been the different kinds of USB. I know it's confusing and I hope I you found this video helpful in some way. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheerio.